million francs. 25 million francs? Is that all? Oh, I, I thought it was more. Well, I... Uh, however, we can discuss that later. Of course. I could give you a yes or no now. But that wouldn't be good banking. I've been taught to, to frown at a client. Put him off. Keep him dangling. So I'm afraid you'll just have to dangle a while. <laughs> Filthy business, isn't it? No hurry, no hurry at all. I wanted you to be thoroughly convinced that your loan would be a secure one. And I assure you... Now, 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 now. Don't try and get a decision out of me. I've already made one, but you must dangle. I trust that uh, during your stay you will be my guest here at the palace. That's most considerate of you. I should be charmed. Colonel Simon, send for Lieutenant Dorn out. Yes, Excellency. Oh, there were two things they told me to be sure and see in Luxembourg, if I can remember them. Um, why, yes. Your lovely countryside and your uh, Grand Duchess um, Zona. I hear she's very beautiful. It will be my pleasure to present you to Her Royal Highness. Perhaps tonight. We dine at 8.30. Charming, charming. Lieutenant Donna, this is the Count of Monte Cristo, my personal guest. See that he's given one of the royal apartments and that everything is done for his comfort. Thank you, General. Till 8.30 then. A bit of a fool, Zimmerman, but rich. I think if we handle him carefully, we'll get what we want. Zona, will you stop wriggling? This is the fifth time I've gone through the motions of getting you dressed. Are you sure I look all right? If you mean, will he suspect that you haven't had a wink of sleep in four nights, the answer is no. I remember he said he was coming to Lichtenberg on business, but I never dreamed he'd come here. Will you please try to remember that you're a Grand Duchess? Darling, it's the first time in my life I haven't felt like one. He may be able to help us. A man like the Count of Monte Cristo must have powerful friends. Baron von Neuhoff had powerful friends, and he's having his dinner in the palace dungeon. Perhaps his last dinner. I'm sorry. Come in. Dinner is served at the pleasure of Her Royal Highness. Thank you, sir. May I present the Count of Monte Cristo? I'm happy indeed to welcome you to Lichtenberg. Your Royal Highness. I can't tell you how honored I am to be here. Uh, the Countess von Braun, the Count of Monte Cristo. My dear Count. Enchanted. The Count of Monte Cristo is the last person I expected to receive here. I hope Your Royal Highness won't think I'm presumptuous. It's terribly funny, but uh, for a moment I had a feeling we'd met before. Perhaps it's because the Royal House reminds me of someone I once knew. One of the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. But of course she was not the Grand Duchess of Lichtenberg. Oh no, in fact her name was Fathendorf. <laughs> uh, what? Yes, really it was, Fathendorf. Well, my dear Christo, you don't strike me as being the type of man who would let a beautiful woman escape him, even if her name was uh, whatever it was. <laughs> Well, I did everything I could. I was even ready to, to, to joust for the fair lady's favor. And I'm not a very good jouster, but she rode off out of my life. Shall we have dinner? My dear General Lannan, it's so refreshing in this day of unrest to find a country where one firm hand dictates the national policy. Why, well, do you know, in France, it's come to the point where, where even a chimney sweep considers himself as good as a king. <laughs> in Lichtenberg, it is my policy to keep chimney sweeps in the chimneys. Oh, chimney sweeps in the chimneys. <laughs> excellent, my dear General, excellent. <laughs> Very funny fellow, isn't he? <laughs> I understand you're in Lichtenberg on business, Your Excellency. Well, no, not exactly. You no, see. he's too modest. Since three o'clock this afternoon, Lichtenberg is indebted to His Excellency in the sum of 25 million francs. On the contrary, my dear General, I feel greatly indebted to you. It's such a privilege to meet a great man doing such great things for this country. One can't place a monetary value on achievement. Don't you agree, Your Royal Highness? Gentlemen, I'll leave you to your cigars and port. But I don't smoke. And my doctor assures me that port is the reason all Englishmen have the gout. <laughs> if you'll excuse me, I have a headache. I'm afraid the ladies didn't enjoy their dinner. Oh, really? I thought it was very palatable. I have to report that 10 o'clock inspection of the guard has been made. 
10 o'clock. Oh, excuse me. Must be the provincial atmosphere, but I have that, that drowsy feeling. Just right after a good dinner and before a good night's sleep. Oh, I quite understand. Well, you must have had a very tiring day. Suppose we just say good night. Ah, oh, the perfect host. Who knows the exact moment at which to say good night? Attend His Excellency. Schultz and I are ready at 11. 11. Splendid. That gives me exactly 58 minutes and 30 seconds. This way, Your Excellency. If you don't mind, I think I'll go this way. And I don't need an attendant. Your Highness, what a pleasant surprise. But fresh air is, I believe, the best cure for a headache. Uh, may I? You change characters quite easily. I saw you first as a cavalier. Now I see you in the role of a fop, flattering the ego of a man that your first personality should have every reason to despise. Just what is your true character? Hmm? Oh, I'm a businessman. A banker, to be exact. I believe in making my clients feel superior to myself. <laughs> in pet, you made me believe you were a chivalrous gentleman. I even cherish the memory of what you did that night. I hope you believe it's my desire to add to that memory. By lending General Lennon all the money he needs to completely destroy my country. But loans are not based on sentiment, but on sound collateral. And what collateral does he offer you? A mortgage on the whole of Lichtenberg. What you have bought is a partnership in his crimes against my people. From what I've heard of your father, he'd hardly be proud to know that his son had financed a tyrant and a traitor. But perhaps I made this loan because I consider you the most important part of my security. How unfortunate. You should know that General Lannan does not include me in the collateral for the reason that General Lannan has proposed marriage to me. Also on a business basis. You know, you're even more beautiful when you're angry. Good night. Oh, well. One thing at a time. Good night, beloved. Therefore, I, Gorkulanen, do impose the sentence of death by hanging upon the said Baron von Uhoff and to order that the execution of this death warrant shall be carried out at 12 o'clock midnight, May the 10th. Which is tonight, I believe. Do you have anything to say? Yes. You may deliver a last message to General Lannan. Tell him that if he hopes to bury loyalty to Zona of Lichtenberg in my grave, it will rise again to destroy him. Guards! <laughs> Don't you? Just Lieutenant Dorner reporting for duty, sir. Well, for the rest of my life, I'm going to view all five places with suspicion. But it's very useful. Well, my father and grandfather were officers of the Household Guard. They taught me a lot of useful things about this palace Gurko doesn't know. Let's hope that fireplace is one of them. Are we ready? As ready as a last hope can be. But it's better than no hope at all. I feel that I drag you into this. <laughs> I galloped in. We have one chance in a hundred of getting two Von off. To say nothing of getting them out. That makes it a sporting proposition. Shall we go? This way. Where's Schultz? Making his rounds. He'll join us below. The stairs have been forgotten for 50 years. Let's hope they won't be remembered for another 50. Schultz. In one minute, the sentry will inspect Von Neuhoff's cell. I'll meet you at the bottom of the stairs. I better go in first. You'll be recognized on sight. But you'd be recognized too. No, I won't. I decided to create another character that General Lannan doesn't know. One I hope he never will. Well, this is the last night we'll have to do this. And good riddance. The trouble with this job, we're as much in jail as Von Neuhoff. Yes, but we aren't going to hang in an hour.
Nothing new. He's sleeping like a baby. Well, I wouldn't be sleeping like a baby. You would if you were an aristocrat like Von Newhall. Well, let's have a look at him. He's sleeping all right. Remember the plan? I know it by heart. The minute we get Vanu off out, we make it to the North Tower. Runs under here to the river. That's our way out. 